Our next presenter is Gavin Andreessen, who's going to talk to us about making money. I know you hate that title. <laughs> Gavin told me like two weeks ago, he's like, dude, you can't call it making money. And I said, but it's, you know, that's our whole thing is these making two, two, two word titles. And uh, so it's really creating a decentralized electronic currency. And I will tell you, I own some of this currency. So you're going to hear a little bit about it right now. Are you ready? I'm ready. 15 seconds. You ready? Go. <laughs> so Bitcoin is a new kind of money. It's um, the first decentralized electronic currency, not created, not controlled by any single organization or government. It's an open source project uh, used by somewhere between five and 10,000 people right now. So all over the world, there are people running the Bitcoin software, and they're trading about $30,000 worth of Bitcoins with each other every day, with no middlemen, no fees, no credit card companies. It's a startup currency, which has never happened before. A bunch of people, a bunch of websites have just started to accept Bitcoins. Everything from, oh, sports to rubles to all sorts of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Crazy stuff. Um, Bitcoin was invented by this guy named Satoshi. Well, at least he calls himself Satoshi. I'm pretty sure that's not his real name. He's this mysterious guy who was definitely inspired by the cypherpunks. Now, the cypherpunks were a group of hackers in the 90s who won the encryption wars. They're the reason why when you access your bank account or talk on Skype, you can have a private conversation that nobody can overhear. So the cypherpunks have done a lot of cool stuff. One of the things, they had the idea of creating an anonymous private money, but they didn't actually figure out how to do it until Satoshi figured it out about three years ago. Like any good hacker, he released the he, he wrote the software and then released it to the world. Now, that is not Satoshi standing next to a Bitcoin. <laughs> that is stone money on the island of Yap. And I'm showing it to you because stone money and Bitcoins actually have a few things in common. First of all, stone money was incredibly hard to make. There's no limestone on Yap. Yap. So the people on Yap sailed these canoes 250 miles to the island of Palau. They convinced the people on Palau not to kill them while they carved the money with, with uh, tools made out of shell, and then they had to sail it all the way back. Bitcoin is kind of similar in that it's really hard to make. It's designed to be hard to make. <laughs> Happily, your computer does all the work. You don't even have to get your feet wet. Another interesting thing about stone money is it's transparent. Everybody knew how much of it what there was, because it's right there outside. <laughs> Bitcoin is similar in that every time a Bitcoin is created, it's transmitted across the network all over the world. Everybody knows exactly how much of it there is. So stone money actually had a couple of advantages over the money we all use today. Decentralized, anybody can create it. The only really big minus was it's only good for big purchases like, you know, the dowry for an important wedding. Bitcoins combine all the advantages of stone money with all the advantages of modern money. Really, the only downside is it's brand new. Nobody trusts it yet because it's so new. Only geeks really understand it so far. If you think about it, money's about trust. We have to trust that our central bankers won't just print money willy-nilly. Ben Bernanke doesn't have to get in a canoe and sail it anywhere to create a billion or a trillion dollars. Satoshi didn't trust them. With the global financial crisis and bank bailouts all over the world, a lot of us are starting to wonder, can we really trust the people who control our money? Satoshi didn't, so he created Bitcoin. Why do I trust Satoshi? Well, the truth is, I don't trust Satoshi. I know that there are going to be 21 million Bitcoins made over the next 50 years because the source code tells me so. I know nobody else can spend my Bitcoins because I understand public key cryptography. What can I say? I'm a geek. I understand this stuff. <laughs> now, I've been leading the Bitcoin project for the last month or so, but even I don't have the power to change the rules. If I tried, my version of Bitcoin wouldn't be compatible with anybody else's, and my Bitcoins would be worthless. It's a brand new baby currency worth about $3 million so far. I don't know where it's going to go, but there's a small possibility that in 50 years, it just might replace the dollar as the world's reserve currency. It might happen. 
I created my first Bitcoin website is the Bitcoin Faucet. You can go there, get Bitcoins for free, because I know to trust something, you have to use it, you have to try it. I'm actually looking for more people to help me take Bitcoin from a weird idea created by geeks to a mainstream payment method that we all use. If you're interested, drop me a line. Man, that's great. Geek money. <laughs> and it's real money. And, and Gavin did not mention the fact that uh, you, you saw a little bit of a chart there for a second. Uh, had gone from zero dollars, it was worth zero dollars, to three million dollars, the entire Bitcoin supply now. And uh, I, I bought some Bitcoins eh, as about uh, five months ago, four months ago, and uh, it's about tripled in value now. So much better than the Dow. And, you know, I, I've tried to look at the Dow Jones source code, and I've never been able to make heads or tails out of it, um, but I can figure out Bitcoins.